Okay, you're being recorded. So this is going to go on to YouTube later on today. And if anybody, you know, misses their um, misses a class, just remind them that they can review it online on our website. Oh, and I wanted to remind you, Reverend Sharon's meditation is coming up next Wednesday, six o'clock. Um, the last Wednesday of the month at six o'clock. I think that's next Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, it is. Okay, thank you. Um, so um, be sure to sign up. It's really powerful. And darling, don't forget to get your name to that, okay? Okay. Thanks. Morning, everybody. Morning. Rise and shine. Hit the deck. See who's here. Hello. Hello. Bye bye. How's everyone today? Great. It's so great that you have this over the summer. Like you can take off. Oh, we were able to be here. So oh, it is. thank you. Is. Well, I we, I'm I'm uh, not going to do it in August because I want everyone to take a Sabbath time, and uh, I'm I'm working on a fall program. And uh, I think I mentioned last week, if anyone has a book that you love, and I, I, I have a few at home, uh, I think I'm gonna use E squared. I think I'm gonna use E squared by Pam Grout. Uh, e I, I, I'm reading it now and I kind of like it because she's got a great sense of humor and it's, it's accessible. You know, it's easy to understand. It's not all a head trip. What's her Pam Grout, G R O U T, and uh, and it is it's practical. There are experiments at the end of each chapter, so I'm not sure how I'm going to pull it all together yet. But I'm thinking that one. So I want everyone to rest up and be all excited for the fall. So August, no, we'll go here through the second Wednesday in Ju July. It's almost July now. I found this and I thought we'd start off with this as a prayer. Uh, and it's, it's from Unity's publication, Messages We Need to Hear. Um, this is at the end. Uh, so if you'll just close your eyes and let the words come in however they do. And you can hear me online, yeah? Yes. Great, okay. I have faith in you because I have faith in God in you. I do not pray for you to be better than you are. I pray for you to be as good as you are. I pray for you to express your true Christ self. Sorry. I do not pray for you to be happy in the way I think your happiness lies. I pray for you to follow your indwelling light, which always leads you to fulfillment and happiness. I do not pray for you to be free from responsibilities. I pray for you to be free from worry and anxiety, to be the fearless, wise, confident, capable being that you are in spirit. I do not pray for you to conform to my idea of success and achievement. I pray for you to express and expand your God-given abilities and talents in your own unique and wonderful way. I pray for you knowing that you are beloved of God. I love you as God loves you. Amen. And amen. So that was for you. It is, isn't it? Any questions come up uh, from last week? Some of you have the book, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know. No? Okay. Well, then, let's go. I love I love the uh, idea of shape shifting. 
uh, many years ago when I was, I had a, I was leading a church in Gainesville, Florida, where, you know, where, where the Gators are. And I became uh, acquainted with Fred Allen Wolf, who is a quantum physicist out of San Diego, I think it was San Diego State, he was a prof there. But I think his first book was called The Quantum Leap. And, uh, and he began to get into shamanic practice. Even before Fred Allen Wolf, I was introduced to a man named Michael Harner when I was in Clearwater, Florida. And Michael Harner was probably one of the first of us North Americans to explore the, uh, the shamanic practices of the, I think it's the Hebrew Indians in South America. And so I did a workshop with him on shamanic practice. The point being here, and it's what we teach in unity, that by the power of our thought, we shape substance. By the power of our thought, we shape substance. In other words, everything around us, this, our, our bodies are congealed spiritual substance, substance. And so the importance of our thoughts in shaping substance, and then that becomes our reality, right? So shape shifting. And so uh, I, I like to think of prayer as a, and, and being in a group like this to explore these ideas and be in the consciousness of prayer energy, uh, that it is a challenge for shape-shifting our own consciousness as we might desire. Uh, just like that little prayer was saying. So that's what I'm affirming for our time together, that we are shape-shifting substance according to your heart's desires and your highest intentions and spirit's will for you. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. I love these pictures of people praying. Last week, I think we talked a little bit about, and in the first part of the book, I talk about so many ways to pray. And I think I mentioned last week too, there's that song, Our Thoughts Are Prayers, and we are always praying. In other words, our thoughts connect us with the substance of spirit, the substance of the universe, the field of all possibility. And that's what prayer is, right? Prayer is that present moment intention connection, intended connection with our spiritual substance, with the field of all possibility. And so there are many ways to pray. And there are I want to be careful how I, how I articulate this because at the bottom line is there's no wrong way to pray. There's no wrong way to, to intend to connect with the field of all possibility with the divine. And yet there are some techniques I think that enhance the experience and the energy. And one of them is, you know, to be in a position like I'm pointing to the camera, which you can't see. The one on the far left, where she's kind of in a squat position with her hand, or over at the bottom, at the far the far right, or above her, or this little child with a rock in her hand that says "pray" on it, uh, or the priest standing at a lake. Thich Nhat Hanh talks about walking meditation. You know, so. So there are lots of ways to put ourselves in a position to be maximally blessed by our connection with divine. Any comments there? I can see it, Doug. Okay. No, I mean. No, someone's connected. Yeah, so oh, someone wants want Oh, it. okay. Oh, thank, thank you for that. Thank no, you that's, for that's that. her. That's oh, that's her. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's you. That's you. You're right. Oh, it's it's Billy. Oh, Billy and Stan are here. <laughs> okay. Hi, Billy and Stan, wherever you are. Trying to clean up. 
So what is prayer? Uh, Doug, can you read this? Can you see it well enough to what read? What is prayer? Then I asked, does a firm persuasion that a thing is so makes it so? He replied, all poets believe that it does and in age of imagination, this firm persuasion removes mountains. But many are not capable of a firm persuasion of anything, mm -hmm. William Blake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Unity says, pray in faith. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea, and it will be done for you. If you have faith and never doubt, that's a key <laughs> to have a firm persuasion to have the faith that we are actually shape-shifting substance when we when we pray, when we have that focus. Any comments there? I'm gonna give you all some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just trying again. Okay, I guess they're coming back. Lost spilling in them. So last week, <clears throat> you shared with each other a little bit about your uh, prayer journey. I'm kind of curious, um, and I think it would probably be a blessing to all of us to hear some sharing about it. Hey, Stan. Can't hear. Stan, can you not hear? Connects you to audio. I think he's still working on it. Uh, has, your, has your prayer life, your prayer journey changed over the years? Definitely. Over the years, mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Oh, for, so. for me, well, for one thing, I do more of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more conscious. If our thoughts are prayers, then I become much more conscious of what my thoughts are yes. um there's been a lot that i needed to delete <laughs> and replace but um at just uh, uh an awareness that i am in prayer most of the time that is fabulous well i would say that as i've grown older i um stopped uh, making deals like if you do this <laughs> <laughs> uh, just pray for the energy that it gives yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Anybody else? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Joe. Yeah, recognizing the divine and unifying what that divine. Yes. And uh, can you say a little more about recognizing the divine? Well, recognizing that that God is all power, God is love, and then unifying with it, knowing that I'm an example of that and I'm the spark of that, and it's within me. And then I realize it works, realizing, and then I give thanks, and then I release it and let it go. Great, yeah. great. So I, I want to just point to uh, what you said about connecting with the divine as being connecting with power, divine power and love. <clears throat> we could say connecting with the idea of divine light. Um, divine understanding. This month has been the idea of uh, the power of divine imagination, which is, you know, that creative power in us where we can create pictures or however each of us prefers to create. And uh, coming up in July, it's divine understanding. So that idea of putting our mind in the mind of God is like putting our mind in the idea that infinite power is available to us. We, we can have the power to do what is to be done by us. I saw a hand up, was it you? Yeah, yeah um, I totally agree very much with uh, what Vinny Joe said. Um, that I always feel that as long as I stay in the connection in prayer or just bearing witness, you know, throughout the day uh, and being, I always like being in the presence. Um, I feel that my life unfolds. It kind of, 
it's not that I'm creating, it's not, I don't like when you, you talk a lot about creating your life, and yet I find very often that my life bears witness to that which I hold in consciousness. It's it. today I went and wanted to take my my sister's wheelchair over to Sunshine. And that's a place where they just give anybody in, in, in Sun City mm -hmm. anything they need for a loved one. Yeah. So as I pulled in, this young man is next to my car and he's loading up all this stuff. And he just turned around and said, oh, good morning, Adam. Do you need help? And I said, no, do you need help? <laughs> And he said, well, my dad is coming home from the hospital and I'm getting all these things for him to be comfortable at home. And I said, do you have a hospital bed? He said, no, they don't have hospital beds. So we're going to go look for them. So I wrote down on a piece of paper right where Barbara is, my sister who just passed away, right where her home is and that he can pick it up at any time. Oh, wow. And it was like, I just, it's like this overwhelming feeling of thank you. Yes. It's just mm -hmm. like, you know, the gratitude of that just unfolding in the space of love. In the space of love is yes. the yes. key. Yes. The key. Yes. Uh, because uh, have, how many of you have ever found yourself saying something that surprised you? I mean, and I, of course, I think since we're talking about prayer here, I'm thinking of something that surprised you in a positive way. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like out of the space of love comes, do you need help? Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to plan that. No. no. Because uh, God works through us. Mm -hmm. Our spirit works through us. And um, here's the here's the the I think the key. I talk a lot about keys. This is a big key yeah. uh, about creation and imagination. And that is we're co-creators with God. God can't create unless we're cooperating. That is because God's key. invisible, right? I think that's the key that helps me because when I say I'm creating, I'm co I'm co-creating, I'm in the space of God love. Yeah. And then that is processed through me. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. And when we get to the power of will, I'm not quite sure which month that is right now, but when we get to the power of will, you'll hear me say or you'll read, or you'll hear from probably any unity ministry or anyone in a 12-step program, you'll hear that, that the use of my will is to get hold of the will of God. Mm -hmm. And there's a book, it's the name of the book, by Lewis Edwin. And I'm, he's not the only one who said it. God is always talking in us, talking and praying in us. Are we present to the conversation? And when we are, we're co-creating. Then we can get, see, my God gives me pictures sometimes. I get pictures in my imagination. So I think, I sometimes think of imagination as a photo play. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, a negative on which God projects something and if we're present to it and our, and our heart is clean and pure, we get the picture. If there's some issues in there, we get a different kind of picture. I remember my disclaimer. <laughs> Take what you like and leave the rest. Okay, so uh, Darlene, would you read the quote on the top? Prayer helps us. Prayer helps us connect sources of inspiration and wisdom that transcend the rational, analytical side of the mind. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't have to figure it out on our own. There is divine wisdom available, to, divine understanding available to us. So anything you want to add about how your prayer life has changed over the years? 
Well, being involved in unity, I think it's more affirmative prayer. You know, as a as a child, it was always please God, and, you know, do this for me, and <laughs> and a little sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I think in, uh, in addition to Total love, uh, all of you, please speak up because uh, Stan and Billy and Cindy uh, are here. Um, as far as ways that you pray, I think that I've really learned not to pray worry prayers, mm -hmm. where you say, oh, God, please don't let it be cancer. Mm -hmm. Say instead, I know my body can heal. And that makes a big difference in your attitude when you're dealing with the yeah. problem, too. It's different energy so, totally, isn't it? So talking about energy. No more worry prayers. No more worry prayers. Okay, I'm going to move on. Were there any other comments? I just had a quick question. Yes. I um, love questions. Coming from a strong religious science background. Yeah. Does unity believe, like religious science, that we're all individualizations of God? Yes. Expressing yes. God through us i mean you kind of said that partially but you know that god has all those qualities that you've been talking about in service and then we have those qualities because we're an individualization of it. yes mm -hmm. we say that exactly and it's in any number of our books by charles Fillmore too mm -hmm. we are individualized expressions of the one mm -hmm. yeah yeah like God's thumbprint right here, right there. Yeah. Yes, that's a good question. It's a good question. The Christ in us, you know, is that that divinity. Um, and I mean, that it, isn't the spiritual journey really about realizing that and expressing it? One hundred percent of the time. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know that anyone has ever gotten there. Maybe Jesus. But even he had a list or two. Uh, okay, so your relationship with God. This is kind of uh, what we talk about in the Unity Basics class. But I think it's good to reflect for a moment because what you and I believe about God influences how we pray or what we pray or the energy we bring to prayer. So, what do you believe about God? You're thinking, right? <laughs> <laughs> For me, God is energy, creative energy. It, um, everything created in the universe is, is a um, substance, a creative substance, and that is somewhat my description of God. Great, thank you. Thanks. Who else? Yes. I, I don't believe, as I think a lot of us were taught, that God is some special being up in the sky. So then I also agree that God is energy, but I have a hard time praying to energy or praying with energy or praying at energy or whatever. And so to me, God is not a person in the sky, but it's still more personal because I talk with this person, knowing that it is the universe and more than I can ever express, but yet I feel just comfortable speaking on more friendly. I, I don't know how to explain it without, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> it is unexplainable. Um, yeah, 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 I mean, just like praying. praying. Yes, that's it. <laughs> It's, my my answer is I can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think it's in the realm of mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in unity, uh, we say one of the ways that metaphysics one talks about God is, or, or the nature of God as best human beings can understand us, and human beings across the strata of planet have different conceptions. In unity, in unity, we say individualized expression and we talk about the nature of God that yeah. is really 
being fully supported by science today. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we, we say that God is imminent and transcendent. Mm -hmm. God is in us and everywhere present. And uh, that everywhere present is the great mystery. Uh, I think, or one of the great mysteries, and that is uh, what you were saying. You know, you talk to God as you would to a friend that you love and trust. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that is borne out by science saying, clearly, whatever this is, is love. Mm -hmm. I like energy of love. I can't, I can't say which is energy because it has to have a connection to the expression of love. To something, yeah, to yeah. something that you can identify yeah. with as a human being. Mm -hmm. And as human beings, we come to learn, you know, a, a beautiful, beautiful expressions of love, real love, you know, what we call spiritual love. Who else on God, beliefs about God, or questions? Any Stan, Billy, Cindy? Billy, where are you? There you are. Any comments or questions about your reflections about God? I think I gave you mine, so I'll let Stan give you his. Or I think you asked me that last time. I don't anyway. know. It was too long ago. <laughs> it was too long ago. We're in San Stan. Well, I think the God, I think the concept of God within is is uh, is is very critical because that that in, to me that it reflects the spirit, and uh, the spirit is not only within but it's without as well. It's just it's universal, yeah. and it um, uh, you know sometimes we we talk about the importance of saying grace before before a meal. Yes, it's a, it's significant, but at the same time, if you live in a state of grace, you don't have to worry about that every single time situation. Both are true, right? Both are true. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Uh, the individualized expression. Why is that important to know? Stan was saying that it's important and key to know that we are that spirit dwells within us. That we are individualized expression. Why is that important? that's in everyone because it's in everyone good point every everyone everyone and everything yeah but i mean sometimes we think there's bad people we forget to think of that what's within them yes and why why is it important beside that beside knowing it's important to know that god is individualized as every human being and I mean, we don't always see that, but it's important to know that because that changes us. Mm -hmm. Why else is it important to know that spirit indwells each of us? For me, it's the spirit within me that I commune with. That you can what? Commune with. Oh, commune with, yes. Yeah. To feel that energy, to know that I, I am an individual expression. Yes. It is our hope, isn't it? Yes. I think Paul said that. Our hope of glory. Christ in you, your hope of glory. Amen. Christ in you and I is our hope that we can live the best kind of life we can imagine. Is our hope that we can live in peace and joy rather than anxiety and worry and upset. Yes. Jim. I was brought up with that anxiety and worry and so forth. My grandmother was a widow, raised two children in a small town, became a teacher. And when we went to church, my grandmother said, they're all here for business context. They're all here for business context. Oh. And then when the minister hit on her and he was married, I began to say, there's something wrong with the church here will go over here. And we didn't really connect to the church. We have very good values and very good trends and good friends. 
And then we got moved to Chicago from a very small town, town of 300, it's not very big. Well, <laughs> and so then we're reconnecting with our values and our trends, and we're in a Catholic neighborhood, and we're Protestants, and there <laughs> goes the Protestants. And, <laughs> and we had it again. It was money from the church. They came to us, wanted money from the church, and we did not go to church. Um, I think I was raised by a very um, value, valued family, both sides of the family, with traditions and values and love and affection for others without the church, to tell you the truth. We must have had a spirit in us that was guided so good, but we did not pray. I have not prayed most of my life. But my son got sick one time, and I went down to that church chapel, and I started praying. And this nurse came, and she was praying. And she put her arm around me and, and prayed. And I said, there's got to be a God, because this is wonderful having this person with her arm around you. And so we started to go back to church. Now, I'm still having trouble remembering what my family did to what we're doing now. Yeah, but in my heart, I love everybody. Or if you love me or not, but I feel that there's value in everybody. And most people say to me, "Hi guys, you went over that beat up guy over there, and you're showing him love." And I'm saying there's a value there, yeah. and I believe that's where our message is inside you yeah. now. And. Uh, for me to sit down and say prayer, no. For me to stay in my own body and want the best for everyone, that's where my value lies. Oh. And um, this is new to me. Okay. Oh. And I wanted to share that. <laughs> I, I'm glad you did. Oh. I think this is new to a lot of people here. And they're not telling you this. <laughs> and I believe that you could go to church for years and pray and be all this best person and not be there. No. And yes. when you finally come to, come on, 78 years out, it's coming around now to, to being that I've cared and there's value and you're all value, mm -hmm. every one of you. And, and we're doing something that you're providing our thoughts to. Uh, meet our needs now. And you're doing a good job with this. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. Uh, so it, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Do you know? And it's, uh, it's worth contemplating and exploring because Jen's talking about values without having gone to church or praying there was some inherent idea of what's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I think and I think there is in all of us because Christ, because we're divine by nature, right? So mm -hmm. if, if, if we're fortunate enough to recognize that or to be awakened to it somehow, uh, then that shifts everything and the values that we live by serve us well. And so what does that say to you? I hope it says, I better go to church on Sundays. <laughs> just just kidding. Going. We're all what? We're all evolving. Yes. All evolving. yes. Yeah. Yeah. evolving, evolving. Yes. Uh, I've heard more than one minister say, I want to get it right this time because I don't want to come back <laughs> and, and go through it again. Uh, you know, I kind of relate it with Jen about not praying because, I, you know, I, I've always thought that God was within me and, and functions as me while he's in me, which he is always. Um, so I, I do more talking with God, I think, yeah. than what I would call praying. Mm -hmm. 
you know, now there's still times I fall back and say, you know, God help me, have patience, help me, you know. Um, but you know, along the way, I you know, I can't remember if it was in the Bible or, or, or where it was, but it said God wants you to ask him for help. You know, so um, every once in a while I do fall back on that. Please help me. Yeah. Well, as human, I mean that's the human condition, isn't mm -hmm. it? We all have challenges. I mean, is there anyone in here who has not had a faith crisis mm -hmm. of sorts? You know, like, boy, I really need God now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can relate to what Jan said as well. Um, but when, we, when she mentioned um, just in, like inherently knowing those values, mm -hmm. I feel like... Um, I too grew up with some values and stuff without formal religious education. Um, and I think that feeling is is that divinity that that is in me that to me um, affirms it's annoying. It's annoying. Yes, that it is there. I I am with it and it's with me, God, whatever we want to call it. Um, and and what Jan mentioned, like she just will go within and be with her values and her thoughts and stuff. What came to mind for me is that is a form of prayer mm -hmm. that, you know, there's more than one way to pray. Um, um, tuning into yourself and your thoughts and your energy it is a form of prayer or meditation. Yes. I mean, it's a way, I think prayer is a way of organizing our life. Yeah. Mm -hmm the concept. And it could be that the word values is a way of organizing our life mm -hmm. and how we be in the world. And so that word prayer, um, I think the thing for me about prayer is that it communicates to me that I am aware that I am connecting with divine energy. Because mm -hmm. lots of stuff I do, I'm not thinking I'm connecting with divine energy right now, even though I may be doing something good. You know, I just mm -hmm. I don't think about it. But nevertheless, when we do something good, we are connecting with the divine, whether we're aware of it or not. Uh, I was thinking, Betty, just that uh, what Darlene said about talking with God, yeah. I think makes me aware that I'm connecting because we're having a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and you, it's not prayer shouldn't all be, even, even if it's just, thank you, God, I'm sure God mm -hmm. is glad to hear that. But it's not all going one way. It should be saying something and listening. We say it and listening. So that's why I consider it a conversation. Mm -hmm. Isn't there a book out, Conversations with God? Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes, Neil Donald Walsh. Uh, what do I want to say? I was thinking of, as you were talking, Jan, and I'm thinking of values and, you know. Be able to say something. No, you can't. You two okay? I have a comment. Please. So, one of my goals is to be like Brother Lawrence uh, in a book called Practicing the Presence of God. And he did it. He practiced the presence of God while he was washing dishes. So it was in everything, not just in church, not just in doing something special, but in doing the absolutely everyday things. And the goal to me says the best uh, goal is to be able to do that 100% of the time. Yeah. I'm never separated. I'm, I'm never in that error of thinking that it's it and me. Right. It's one. And my connection to God is also the reason that I'm connected to everything that's ever created. All people, everything is divine. Everything is sacred. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Billy. Thank you.
Thank you. Any comments to follow up on that, Jan? I agree with Billy. What she said was very poignant and I uh, agree, but I don't agree with that you have to kneel. No, that's no. what I said in this book that that would lead you to her. I didn't kneel until I got to the Catholic Church. And what good was it to kneel? I kept saying, okay, we're going to stand up and sit down and rah, rah, rah. And you your knees. And I. <laughs> Life and I don't have to today. I don't want to, and I'm going to fight that. You don't have to, and I, I, I said, I think I say in the book, not that you have to, right, right, but, uh, but that it is a way of praying. It's just a, well, way. It's a Catholic way of praying in my estimation. Well, I'm sure, it's in other churches, but I've never seen. Yeah, I don't that. know that any other denomination does. Um, I don't know if Jesus Luther, did. Luther, Maybe the picture of the Bible. The, the, the Lutherans do? Yeah. Evangelicals do. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, all 12 step programs invite you to pray on your knees. Why? Because it right sizes us. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. And right size, in other words, I'm not, my ego is not leading me. I'm not prideful. Mm -hmm. I, uh, there's something humbling yeah. about praying on my knees um, there's and, and not in a self-effacing way it, it's uh it's it's a way mm -hmm. it's one way mm -hmm. uh, symbolically could it be that it's i mean you feel like you're surrendering and and being open and willing to receive you know like you're getting out of your own way if you you know, physically maybe kneel or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, to some surrender may be an ugly word, but spiritually speaking, yeah. the best thing we can do with our mind is surrender it to divine mind. Let go of attachment. Yeah, because we live, you know, I say this so many times and it's coming again to my mind. We, we live in a polarized universe. Dark, light day night up down in out and there is negative energy and there's positive energy am i right right and spiritually speaking the task is to take these energies and create something greater like forgiveness, mm -hmm. like service, uh, that's all I have to say about it. I, I was going to say to Jane, if I got down on my knees, I'd have to pray. <laughs> <laughs> about well and many uh, john kevin zen has written extensively about mindfulness mm -hmm. you know the key is mindfulness i think one of the key i keep saying key one of the keys <laughs> is to find ourselves totally mindful whatever does that I, I have a comment on that please one of the stories that i uh, i received um, and I wonder how many clergy were upset to read it because I was saying, how many prayer, I believe prayer should be communicated, which means two ways. How many times can you say, can, I, I say in the story, there have been times when I've been in the church service and saying the Lord's Prayer or the uh, Apostles' Creed, saying it, and at the same time, thinking about my grocery list that I was going to shop for on the way home, <laughs> I said, I can recite those prayers because I've done it so long without even thinking. And that's not what they're meant for. Mm -hmm. right? Right. right. So reciting a prayer and praying a prayer are two different things. Great. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Good point. Mm -hmm. Being present to it. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, any, any other comments about this, this, this slide? 
uh, your relationship with spirit, your, you know, the divine spark in you, anything you want to ask about it or say about it. Someone read this quote for us. Prayer is not talking to God, but listening to God talking to you. Meditation is not asking things of God, but receiving what God wants to give you. What needs to be done to hear God speaking in you? How do you recognize the voice of God? Yeah. Any comments here? Probably. Comments, questions? <laughs> what, Betty? <laughs> you Betty <know>. is a... Uh... <laughs> well, I, I wanted to take this class because somewhere in somewhere the literature you're saying about miracles of prayer or something. And I feel that we, we're receiving them all the time if we're just aware of them. And, and I've been receiving these stories for so many years now that I have this blog out. I'm happy that, uh, to share them with others. But some of them, I really wonder what people are thinking. And my daughter says, it doesn't matter what she, she's in AA. It doesn't matter what people, you, you are expressing what you are feeling, what you are seeing. All right, how do you know what God is speaking? This one, this one says a true story. Tell it real loud, Betty, so it okay. Is. This is a true story. I was driving down Bell Road and the traffic was slow. And I figured I'd make a left turn and go up to Union Hills. But as I started to turn the wheel, the voice in my head said, Turn back, don't do that. And so I straightened it out and I said to God, and this is what I wrote. Well, oh, so I just straightened the wheel. I smiled and said, well, God, I don't know why you don't need to turn onto that street. I guess you're my co-pilot this trip. And suddenly that voice that I hear in my head said, I am the pilot, <laughs> you are the driver. And that unexpected response surprised me, but it also reminded me that I've also had experiences like that. And so I got back into the slow traffic and a car came up to pass me. And this is God's honest truth. And I looked at the license plate and said, oh my God. <laughs> Responding to the fact that I was surprised and I, I was saying to myself, oh my God. <laughs> And then it comes up and asks me. <laughs> so I say, I finally decided it's no longer important to know how these events are happening. The important thing is the communication does happen, whether it's through an inner voice or when you're walking in nature or whether and it's a license plate that's driving by. I believe there's an evolution in human consciousness underway and I'm taking part in it and you all are invited. So then of course there was a question about Oh, I never did find out why I wasn't supposed to turn down that street. I do have free will and, of course, could have made that turn. But experience has taught me that when God speaks, it's better off listening. There you go. So, so I know that it happens. Thank you. So it's watching for synchronicities. Yes. You know, yes. It's saying because they're there. Yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, any comments about... How do you recognize the voice of God? Or, you know, what do you what do you do to connect? Yeah. I think with Kathy's story and Betty's story, they were both open and receptive. Yes. And they were in that field of God saw possibilities and things happen. Yeah, good happen. I like to say um, we've got to have our line in the water. Or as they say about uh, um, lottery tickets, you have to be present to win. You have to have a ticket to get in. Right? Mm -hmm. You have to be present to it. Um, that's all about that. Yeah. Um, for me, um, that meditation is the, for me, it is like the clearing that opens for the reception of what God wants to give me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and that's why it's like a lot of surprises, you know. <laughs> and I'm kind of like it's surprise where it shows up. But for me it's so important to keep keep clear, you know. And that's why practicing the presence 
is a clearing space rather than getting caught up in so many things that are going on. Right. Um, Brother Lawrence was the first book that I read. And Joel Goldsmith, his first, the first book I ever read of his was Practicing the Presence. And there I really caught the idea that I don't go any, go, don't go to church to pray or that the connection is what was most important in my life. Yes. Yeah. Well, then you bring up something that I think is, is worth taking a look at. What do we go to church for? Community. Community. Community, yeah. mm -hmm. hey, community in, a, in a spiritual family. Mm -hmm. That's my. And of course, you're beautiful. So. <laughs> and we come to feel the love. Right? Feel the love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, I think to myself when it comes up to Friday and I start creating the talk, I think, do I dare do one more blonde joke? Yes. And then Mackie gets on the phone. You have your blonde joke yet? <laughs> um, it's a connection. Yeah. Well, it it, it is. And Talking about energy, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine the impact of, let's say, 80, 90 people in a room mm -hmm. who are praying together and lifting their mind into a spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Imagine the impact on all the individuals in there when they're feeling the love, for example or when they are thinking God kind of thoughts. Uh, so, and, and to know we're not alone. That we have to remember, you know, that we walk this path with others, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here for each other. The United Consciousness that, that is so present on Sunday, yeah. you know, with our, our beautiful service. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, hopefully something positive happens. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's funny because I go, that's something when somebody said, you know, it's not your, any of your business, not that it's, that's a strong way to put it, but to be in prayer, sometimes like I have a group, we do world work and it's just, it's just a meditation and it's, it's the energy of the group that, that God wants to give wherever yeah you know it's it's i'm not pointing to it i'm i'm staying in the presence for the receiving what god wants to give and it, who knows where it has to go right to a person to a place a thing is that is that like make me an instrument yes mm -hmm. right yeah, jan Okay, I've been to a church where we all prayed together, and we went into the rec center, and people were mean to each other. <laughs> you were mean to each other? Yeah. Yes. I went to pay for something, and three people jumped in front of me, and I said, this is not a good feeling. And <laughs> I think you've experienced this. Now, what you've asked us to do at the church is to mingle in here, and I don't think we would mingle if you didn't say that tell you the truth and when she says with our women's group i want you to get up and i want you to meet a new friend mm -hmm. that's somebody that's got a feeling of goodness in them and i think people are are naive they're not naive they're so isolated that they're afraid to reach out i'm not and i think you do of uh, that, and it does help a great deal to know mm -hmm. you all. And I enjoy meeting all of you. You've got stories tonight. I know we can share. Mm -hmm. You're amazing in that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I appreciate that you said that because uh, what I would love to see, what matters to me in fellowship time is where no one's alone. Mm -hmm. Where no one who goes into that room ever sits alone. 
that that is so important to me and i enjoy and exhort <laughs> all of us to watch for that yeah and, and and as you said jen meet some new people mm -hmm. it's so much easier to go where we can tell jokes and feel at home already you know we don't have to start all over in a relationship uh i think though one of the one of the reasons to come to come to church is to know that we're not alone to uh, feel a sense of community and sisterhood and brotherhood so it's it's important to, to be an instrument of that any comments from you guys out there you ladies and gentlemen okay i'm moving on I love this. So the first part of the book is about accessing the power. And we've talked about that last time in this week, we've talked about how to access the power uh, by putting our mindfulness, being fully present to one another, be present in here. Um, and this is Annie Lamont. I love what she said, because it's a, for me, it's a, a beautiful metaphor. The Gulf Stream will flow through a straw provided the straw is aligned with the Gulf Stream. Whoops, sorry about that, that's my error. It should say provided the straw is aligned with the, the Gulf stream. stream and not at cross purposes to it. Right. So if you can imagine our consciousness as the straw and spiritual energy as the Gulf Stream, we can't be at cross purposes to it, but if, we're, if we are aligned, let's say when we're loving or kind or compassionate or give when we're any of those kinds of energies, the Gulf stream is flowing through us is already flowing through us. Thomas. I thought it would be good to have just a little practice with unity's affirming process. So <clears throat> Remember we talked about denial and affirmation, right? Denial is no, the power of erasing or releasing. And yes, faith is the power of, um, what's the word I want? Um, the power of, oh, I lost. Faith is, well, it's a lot of things, but one of the things it does when we say yes to something is we, we've just taken it on, we've just, one ourselves with it. Okay, so let's say these together and say them thoughtfully. Together, I now release all the people, places, and situations that are not part of the divine plan for my life, and they release me. Next, I now attract all the people, places, and situations that are part of the divine plan for my life. All people, places, and situations that are part of the divine plan for my life now attract me. Do any of you have affirmations that you say for yourself? Like they're in your back pocket if you're, of course, your thinking probably never goes off, but mine does. And so I have a couple of affirmations in my pocket that I pull up. Do you? I have three affirmations that I say every morning in my prayer practice. Mm -hmm. I, encourage, I, I encourage you to try it out. Try it out. See, these are, this is the release, right? The release and the affirming, yeah. which is aligning. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. Comments. Comments. I used to have problems with those affirmations because of it saying I am calm, cool, and collected, and I'm not calm, cool, and collected at that time. I didn't want to say that because I don't like to say lies. But I'm finding that if you accept that fact that you can be that, when you are aware of what you're thinking and what you're doing, you become calm, cool, and collected. So. It, it, I don't have to tell myself so much anymore because when the situation is 
taking place, I think I'm quicker to recognize what's happening and what I should be um, recognizing and, and the, the thoughts and the feelings that I should be generating. Yes. And I think what you said, what uh, Betty said was, you know, I hope you got uh, you online heard her. She was saying it, it at times did not feel it felt awkward to her to say I'm calm, cool, and collected when she wasn't. And um, she's had a, a shift there and realizing if I'm interpreting correctly, Betty, realizing that affirming it helps her get there. And uh, a word that I love in situations like that is I'm willing. I'm willing to be calm, cool, and collected here because then for me, that opens us to grace, mm -hmm. you know, the activity of God working uh, in us. I'm willing, because what we're willing for is the, the energy of spirit, right? When we say, I'm willing to be calm, calm, collected, that's what spirit is, right? Mm -hmm. Calm, calm, collected. Anything else on these affirmations or affirmations in general, which is a way of accessing the power is what I'm saying. Affirmations are accessing. Okay. Do I want to go here? I think so. <laughs> so the second part of the book is about focusing. Focusing the power of prayer. And I have a chapter on healing the heart that is prayers for relationship and comments about that. And uh, then from confusion to clarity, guidance, divine guidance. And then from fear to faith, handling change. And then grace and healing. Uh, so what are your thoughts about focusing the power of prayer? For example, on guidance. When, when you and I are praying for guidance, are we focused? Mm -hmm. Focused on, we've, we've, um, when I choose one thing, I've got to let go of other things, don't I? If I choose to put on my glasses, I can't read my book yet. So if I choose to pray for guidance, I let go of the rest of everything I could be praying for, right? I'm just asking to be guided right now. You know, I wish I had my camera to take a picture of your faces. <laughs> We're intensely listening. Yeah. <laughs> right. So what if, so if I focus on guidance, um, then I have to be aware that I need to let go of attachments or at the outcome, the expectation. Um, that that try to affirm that there's got to there not that there's got to be, but that there is a, probably a higher and better outcome than what I can perceive, and so. Guidance for me is just really being willing and mm -hmm. and open and not listening to maybe like you know the monkey talk the monkey chatter that can go on mm -hmm. um, the negativities or the why I can't when I really know there's limited possibilities so it's a willingness to be open and and uh, um, step on my personal desire for an outcome great thank you who else anybody else <clears throat> okay well what's the key when we talk about healing the heart in relationships what what is the key kind of praying that we do then love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and, yeah, and again acceptance we have to accept people where they're at or how they are we you know i'm not we're not here to fix someone else I got a big enough job fixing me. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the ongoing piece of work. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, have you ever known anyone who can remain cool, calm, and collected in the midst of someone in front of them going off? <laughs> have you? <laughs> Actually, I have. Good. Yes. I mean, that's a, say, cool, that's a cool, great cool, accomplishment. Yeah. yeah just you know that that's where they're coming from that's about them um and just letting them do what they need to do to 
to get over themselves. <laughs> exactly. I I am finding. <laughs> think about this for yourself. I am finding that my practice is when I'm driving on 10. <laughs> yes. Should we take a moment? <laughs> yes. Oh, Shanti. Oh. <laughs> After I've just said, what are you doing? <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, to, to the, uh, yes. That's how you respond to that. Like, I'm keeping exactly. my example is when I was campaigning to be at the train station and passing out my literature, and the one person came up to me, took my literature, rolled it up, and told me what orifice I could put it in. And my response oh. was, I didn't know you're my proctologist. It's all that how you got to respond. Yes, yeah. Because the next person coming, yeah. they know anything about that, and it's a whole different thing. So yes. don't let one person have that too many. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there would be no war. We could all do that all the time. Non reaction. That, that is definitely something I'm dealing with right now. And trying to say when things are being said hurtfully or bizarrely that it's not really that person talking. Yeah. But it still hurts. And I'm working on myself to try to. Yeah, there's yeah. they're not to take it personally. Right. That's yes. Yeah. 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 I think that's what saves me in all those situations. That person that's driving their car in front of me doesn't know me. He hasn't picked me out to purposely get me upset. And I think I've probably said this before. I always try to think, well, maybe his wife is having a baby or something. Right. And my son says, Mom, you think everybody's got an excuse. <laughs> and so I said, but it keeps me from getting angry because I think they should be more thoughtful. And sometimes I secretly hope that there's a cop a couple of streets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The challenge of remaining detached mm -hmm. when the energy coming at you is very, very difficult to say the least. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's just an old unity adage. I think I heard it when I first got to unity back in the 80s. And that is uh, put yourself, put a white circle of energy around you. I, I know I don't think to do that. I should when I'm driving, it might help. Uh, but it's, it's, it is an energy that repels negative energy, kind of like that scripture statement, uh, and the, the dark cannot overcome the light. It's nevertheless, it's energy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Any way you turn it, and so how do, how do you remain centered and not touched negatively by it? I think it's, so it's a huge spiritual practice. Yeah, I think it's so hard when, when it's a relative or somebody that you know in the situation. Um, yes, I think we have to I kind of go back um, to what Christ said on the cross. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's it is uh, especially if you're sensitive, right? If I mean, I think I've often thought of it this way uh, as a the more we grow spiritually, the more sensitive we become to energies. It's like if you take a Stradivarius violin and break a string or mess with a string, the sound is so different. It's, it's, a, it's a more delicate instrument. And not like it creates any weakness. I just think it is We're no longer impervious. 
and at the same time were, were much stronger. For example, if someone who was not spiritually developed listened to that, uh, something drastic might happen. Can you agree? Yes. So <clears throat> spiritual development shows it doesn't make us impervious to energies, but it the power is in there to moderate at least. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a, I think it's a great accomplishment, at least in my opinion, uh, to be able to remain calm in the face of something said that's hurtful, that comes from a negative mm -hmm. conscious. Now, one thing I, um, I heard a long time ago um, was that in our, on our spiritual journey, it's not that we um, do not come across crosses and things in our life, but it gives us a way through them. Yes. Yes. And we do have a way through them because we do have tools. Yes. Thank God, huh? Yeah. That's what I love about unity. It's tools. Mm -hmm. Give me tools. Um, I think yeah. it's brought out very well in your book. Mm -hmm. um, that that statement is so obvious in your book. It's the resilience that we have in our spiritual foundation yeah. that gets us through that that next challenge or whatever yeah. it's our way. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me just before uh, we start. Um, closing out here. Um, no, you don't close it. Too long. Okay, I was just looking at um, some of the things I, I was thinking of. Uh, do any of you have, well, I think some of you have talked about being divinely guided, right? Mm -hmm. Do we need to have any more conversation about any of these things right now, today? Relationships, Guidance, change. Things are changing fast. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I think being prayed up, being spiritually fit mm -hmm. is so essential because things are changing fast. And I mean, if you look at the world situation right now, now that we have you know social media and we know everything that's going on everywhere, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cause to pray. Okay. I think what I'd like to do is take a little quiet time. Would that be all right? Do a little quiet meditation? Yes? No? Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, excuse me, I have to leave because I have okay. a call hey, to get. Turn off the lights on your way up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And shut the door. Yeah. Oh, go out the back way, Betty Jo, so you can shut off those lights too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I love to serve. <laughs> you like this one. So All right. Oh. oh, my God. Unless well, you can find your way back by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you you out there, uh, Billy and Stan and Cindy, we're kind of in the dark here. Not kind of, we are in the dark. <laughs> and so I just invite you to join with us in about a five-minute meditation here. So if you'll get comfortable, all of you, uncross anything that's crossed. And close your eyes gently. And just begin to focus only on your breathing. Just focus there and an and awareness of your divine presence, you as divine presence. And you might even breathe into your heart and, and feel it expand. Feel your chest expand and the love in you is expanding with each breath. Just continue to focus on your breathing. And 
in a minute or so, I'm going to uh, invite you to do something. But for now, just focus on your breathing, breathing from the top of your head all the way down your body into the soles of your feet and out into the floor below us. Now just allow a question, something that you would like divine guidance for. Ask that question into spiritual energy all around you and all over within you. And just sit and listen and breathe. begin to bring your focus back to the room. Don't open your eyes and just be aware of your body and your breath. You might wiggle your toes or your fingers and take another deep breath and when you're ready, open your eyes. Let's turn the lights on, get ready. Okay, how was that? Oh. Refreshing. Yeah, refreshing. Interesting? Mm -hmm. Refreshing. Yeah. Oh, refreshing or interesting? Refreshing. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. I mean, did anyone Peaceful. seek guidance? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did anyone get guidance? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> It'll always come. I hope. Just, I you just keep watching. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready to close with prayer? Any closing comments? Any closing questions? Okay. Well, salt and sugar. Thank you. And water. <laughs> okay, let's take a moment in prayer then. So God, we just give thanks that you are the light in our hearts and minds right now, that you are always there blessing us. We give thanks as we go into our day that your light guides us into a beautiful day one in which we feel your presence, your light, your joy, and your peace. We pray this now, giving thanks that it's done, and so it is. And we all say, Amen. Amen.
Thank you all for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. So this, I don't know if this class is on, is it on the website? The recording is. The recording. Yes, Kathy puts the recording up on the website. Um, usually by tomorrow. Wow. Okay. Then you I have two of them over there. One with just one week. Oh, I know. I could never have a good argument. Wonderful. How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. 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 I'm doing